All right, we're gonna finish at 5.2, which we started last time. And we're about halfway through, and I believe we're on Theorem 5.6. Does that look right? Okay. All right, Theorem 5.6 um, talks about integer, an integer a, and it tells you that if you have negative one times an integer a, this actually equals, right this way, the opposite or the negation of a. Okay, that's equivalent, okay, an equivalent statement. And theorem 5, 7 has some of the same feel to it. It tells you what happens when you multiply a negative number and, uh, or a opposite of a and b together, that this is the same thing as having the opposite of a times b. And likewise, if you have the opposite of a times the opposite of b, what happens with this one? We saw this an example of this last time. That ends up being just a times b. In other words, this negation and this negation, those cancel each other out. The negative times the negative is a positive value. One more theorem that we're going to look at, um, and it has to do with distribution. If you have a times the quantity b minus c, what does that equal? a b minus a c. And it works the same way if I have the number behind the a minus, or sorry, the b minus c, right? We'll distribute these across here. We did this last time, but we did it with addition. So this is B, we'll write BA minus CA, but you could also write AB minus AC. So it doesn't matter whether the multiplication factor is at the end or at the beginning because we have a commutative property that allows us to do it either way. all numbers a and b and we want to talk about a divided by b then this is the unique integer c such that a equals b times c and let me write out what that just told you this said a divided by b which I could also write like this equals c is the same thing I would get if I multiplied the b by both sides and got a equals bc you're very familiar with seeing it in fractional form. Maybe not as familiar seeing it written the way the problem actually has it written where there's got the division sign in there. But just remember division also can be written in fraction bars and thought of in that same way that you're more, more familiar with. All right, one more definition for division here. If A divided by B is a unique integer, that is, if you actually end up with an integer value out of this. Then we say that A is divisible by B, or equivalently, B divides A, and that is written like this. I think you've seen that notation before when we do it whole numbers, right? <coughs> so it's not any different. It has the same language, the same notation. It's just that this is now extending to integers, whereas before we only talked about it in relation to whole numbers. All right, less than. <coughs> Since we have integers a and b, and a is less than b, so here's my a is less than b. This will be true if and only if there's a positive number k such that a plus k equals b. And let me do it with numbers so you can see it. We've seen this before again with whole numbers, but let me do it again with numbers here. Let's say I had negative 1 is less than 7. You agree that that's true, correct? Why is it actually true by this definition? Well, by this definition it's true because there's a number I can put in here that would actually make this equal to 7. And that number would be what? 8. If I put the number 8 in here, I would get this equation to be true. That is, if I add something to the left-hand side, I can make it equal to the right-hand side. And that's what it means to be less than. It means I can add the quantity to the left-hand side to actually make it equal to the right. 
You can almost also think about this like our missing add-ins problem, right? It's less than because it's missing part of it on the left-hand side to make it equal. All right, last theorem for this spring semester. Theorem 5-9. For integers a and b, a is less than b, or we could equivalently say b is greater than a. If and only if b minus a is equal to a positive integer. That is b minus a is greater than zero. Again, let me do some numbers so you can see that you know this is already true. You just don't realize it from the language just talked about. So let's use my negative one and the seven because I already did it. Negative one is less than seven. If and only if the number seven here minus this number over here, negative one, is greater than zero. Sorry, got carried away with my sign. Let's try again. So what is seven minus negative one? It's eight, same eight I got up earlier there, right? Is eight greater than zero? Yes. Okay. Now if we did it the other direction, we would run into a problem. Let's say for instance, we had it written down improperly and we said that we thought that negative one was greater than two whatever, something like that. <coughs> okay, well if we think that negative one is greater than two, let me put this, here's the B. B would be matching up to the negative one. A would be matching up to my two in this case, right? Because I've written it as greater than sine instead. Okay, that has to equal to B, which was my negative one, minus A, which is two. And what is negative one minus two? That is negative three. Is negative three greater than zero? No, this is not going to be true. And because negative three is not greater than zero, just tracing this right back up, that meant my original statement was also incorrect. Negative one was not greater than two. It should have been written the other direction. Okay. All right, oh, I said it was the last theorem. There was one more page of theorem, so I didn't realize. I know, I totally liked it, didn't I? Oh, was there anything else anybody can ever hear it now? Okay. Theorem 510. This is the last theorem. X is less than Y and N is any integer. And so I actually started working a little bit with integer um, addition and subtraction with inequality <coughs> here on the board today when you guys are doing your group work set, right? Or homework questions, right? This is where this is coming from. <coughs> if you have a value where X is less than a number Y, and you've got some other number in, some integer, it is also true that you can add that number to both sides and it not change the inequality. So we'll still have less than in the middle. Okay? So what I always like to do as an well, what I like to do as an example, and I think we've already talked about this once before, is the idea that if I were standing here and uh, my grandmother were standing here right beside me, she'd be about yay high, she's about three inches shorter than me, something like that, right? And they both put on three inch heels. We both raise up three inches in the air, but we'd still do the same difference in height. Right? We talked about that example before. It works here too. I'm able to add the same number on both sides and the inequality doesn't change. I'm still taller than she is. Okay? All right, another one. If I have an inequality where x is less than y, and I, not, I multiply both of them by a negative sign, so now I have negative x and negative y. Again, we talked about this already. What happens? sign changes. So if I multiply and or divide by a negative number, my sign changes. And I'd like to kind of show you as to why that works, because it seems like that's one of those things that somebody told you way back when, and you just do it, and you may not have actually ever been told why that actually happens. So let's say that I have x is less than, I'm going to use some numbers, let's say x is less than 4. Okay. And let's actually multiply both sides by a negative now. Okay? <coughs> well, this would now say negative x, and it would say negative 4. And what we want to say is it should be a greater than sign in the middle. Correct? That's what you'd like to say would happen. So let's look at it. Um, we'll do a number line example, or a number line picture of this. So if I have x is less than 4, here's the number 4. Which direction would be the values less than? left. Right, less than would be left. The numbers smaller than 4 are over here. 
All right, so let's take a look at this one. Here I have, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to change this so we can see one thing before I get to my picture. Right now, this is solved, so I've got a question mark as to what goes between there. That's what I don't know at the moment, so let's just leave it as a question mark. Um, but let's see what numbers we would actually pick um, to solve this. So I need to divide by negative 1 to solve for x. My whole goal is to solve for x. This is x and this is 4. I mean, I know it's a 4. Let's try this. So it should be that my inequality here was switched, correct? So this is only going to work if I can pick a number and make it work. So let's pick a number on the left-hand side and um, show that it works because I should. So let's do 3. Okay. So I put the number 3 into this. I need to actually be able to make it work. So if x is equal to 3, then I'm going to have what on the left? Negative 3, because there's a negative over there already, right? So if I put this 3 in right here, I would have negative 3. And on the right, I would have negative 4. What symbol should be between those? The less than symbol or the greater than symbol? It would be greater than, because negative 3 is actually greater than negative 4. So the symbol that should go here is the greater than symbol. Because if I pick a number in the area that I know my answer's in, I know my answer's on the left-hand side, because I already did the original picture. So it should be shading to the left over here. Then the number over there has to still work with the proper inequality. So the proper inequality here would be greater than, so that when I put the negative, sorry, put the positive 3 into this equation, or inequality, excuse me, I have the right symbol between my two values. Okay? I'm not going to ask you to repeat it or anything, but I just want you to recognize that this is happening in this way. Let me show you one other way to think about it. Because I can still see some blank expressions, and there's one other thought that I have. <coughs> Let me think. Um, let's go with that. Um, the problem, in fact, you know what? Let me use the one that's on the board because I think it was Heather told me I could do something different and I said, I, I'm not going to do it that way. Isn't that what I said, Heather? Yeah. I want to show you what will happen if you do it that way. All right, so one of the things that Heather gave me a suggestion up here is I could move the X. You guys remember that? Um, and I can. I can actually add my X to the other side. Ah, that's an X. Um, and the nice thing to doing that is that I didn't have to add, or I didn't have to multiply by negative when I did that, correct? Okay. However, this sort of looks awkward, right? This says negative 1 is greater than x, and we're used to seeing the x written on the left-hand side. Agreed? Well, if I want to, I can rewrite this moving from right to left now, x, and then this sign, which was previously a greater than sign, but if you read it in respect to x, x is actually less than negative 1. You're reading it backwards, right? You're moving from right to left, which is not how we normally read, which is why it's a little bit awkward. But notice it gave me the same answer as I got over here when I added my 1 to the other side and then divided by negative 1. Make sense? So this idea of switching my signs around is actually me reading an equation backwards, right? Inequality backwards is what it's doing. Okay, this, this idea of changing my equation, or inequality, I'm saying wrong, inequality around. Okay, two more. If I have x is less than y and I have a number bigger than 0, I can multiply both sides of my equation, inequality, still an inequality, it's going to be an inequality all day. Um, I can multiply both sides of my inequality by that number n and the inequality is going to be less than. Okay? So if 5 is less than 10, then 5 times 2 is less than 10 times 2. And 5 times 3 is less than 10 times 3. And 5 times 4 is less than 10 times 4 and you get the idea. Right? You can multiply the number on both sides, and it still stays less than. Okay? What's different on part D? Between D and C? That's different, right? Now instead of multiplying both sides of the inequality by a positive quantity, I'm going to multiply it by a negative value. Okay? And what will happen when I do that? my inequality sign will flip. It will become a greater than sign for exactly the same reason as we went through all of these steps over here. Right? But again, do an example and you'll see it real quickly. If 5 is less than 10 
and you multiply both sides by negative 2, I get negative 10 on the left and I get negative 20 on the right. Which one's bigger? Negative 10 is larger than negative 20. Right? The inequality switch. All right. 